ah, yes, the spice must flow. The spice must flow. That's right, friends. I am the man you may know as E from Our Views Will Kill You, and I am here to react to Dune Part 2. Dos Dunos. That's right. As you may or may not know, I am an enormous fan of Frank Herbert and the original Dune. I've read the original Dune probably somewhere between 8 and 10 times. And I've read all six novels in the entire grouping, as well as some of the outlier novel so i'm very well acclimated to the dune universe if you take a look maybe i'll have a playlist here for all my there's like a dune university and some educational stuff here if you're interested and uh some of my reactions from the dune movie now denis villeneuve i did enjoy the first movie um i'm not gonna say it's the greatest thing i've ever seen it, it's a it's a decent adaptation I, I like it visually i think it lacks a little bit in the story and some of the acting's a little too reserved but i do thoroughly enjoy it and it's but the biggest thing that's hard to judge is it's an incomplete piece of art you get this part one and part two thing and it did do that well in theaters because it was right it was coming right out of the pandemic it did okay so we'll see how the new one does. I'll definitely, I think it's a theater going experience. You should definitely catch it in the theater because it's its so big and bombastic and the, the sound design is pretty interesting. Uh, so let's go ahead and react. I'm going to try my best to avoid spoilers. I'm just going to comment on the things that I see as I skip through it. Obviously, I can't play it. I can't play the trailer and straight up react because... Warner Brothers will copyright strike me in a heartbeat. So let's take a look. Um, I know it starts off here in the desert with Paul and Shiani sitting on a dune. You know, sand dune. Get it? Yeah, you get it. Let's see if I can make it work a little bit so you can see it. Because <laughs> they're being blocked right now. Uh, but yeah, Zendaya's character, Chiani, is going to be very important to the role, like to, to the story. She's kind of the linchpin of what's going on in this one. So it'll be very interesting to see where they take it. Just them chit-chatting, saying how great things are when you can swim. Um, here it looks like you have the Lady Jessica, and she's got crazy makeup on, which was from some of Paul's visions that he saw. This will be uh, pretty critical to the plot as well because, the, as you may or may not remember, there's this group of women who control the universe on some level called the Bene Gesserit. It's like, uh, think of like female priests who have these uh, skills ba based on the fact that they take spice. They take the spice melange. This one's interesting because she was left out of the first movie. You have Florence Pugh coming in as the Princess Urulan who is um, the, the thing that I've seen people react on and I thought was cool, is in the books, she is, there's like prefaces to each book or to each chapter and a lot of them are narrated or told by Princess Urlan because she's a scholar who kind of repeats the history of what happened. So it's cool kind of seeing her here as she narrates like what she thinks is going on and what's happening. There's some fire, fire. And that's right, Duke Leto is, uh, House Atreides has fallen, and this will be the, what happens next, as to uh, what happens with Duke Leto, well, his family at least, and Lady Jessica. There are a couple interesting character surprises that I'm, I'm shocked to see. They still have not give us, given us the Emperor, who's going to be played, um, Who's he going to be played by? Let me just jump here. I, I know who it is. I just Christopher Walken. So that'll be kind of exciting to see Christopher Walken do this. He hasn't acted in quite a while, and and you know, but he'll play. It, it'll be pretty. From whatever I think, his hopefully his interpretation is good. And here we see um, Josh Brolin reprising his role, right? And, and here's some of the weird, the weird stuff that I'm not sure how I feel about it. So this is a character unto uh, unseen so far. And if Paul is the Quizak Hatterack, which is like the coming of like, you know, second coming, this is Fade Rautha, 
of House Harkonnen. So this is a far difference. If you're familiar with the 1984 movie, which I did a review of or like kind of a summary up here, I think I watched the whole thing and kind of summarized it. Um, it's a real fun movie, but this is the character played by Sting. So you're going to be in for a big surprise. Uh, you've got, uh, who's playing? Uh, Austin Butler is playing this character. So this will be interesting to see. Uh, it's obviously a very, very stark, different interpretation. Um, here you have, uh, looks like they're going to enter into a siege, which is basically just a place where the Fremen live. Um, this would give away a part of the plot, but I know exactly what it is. Uh, and they do show a really interesting plot point here. Where is it? Did they show it now? Uh, this is cool. This device here that they're showing is kind of important to Fremen culture. It's called a thumper, and it attracts sandworms, so that's kind of cool. And, and the whole trailer is really just giving you a taste of um, Paul. This isn't really a spoiler because he's been kidnapped you know, by the Fremen, but in order to become a, like Fremen children uh, have to attain a certain skill, which he has to demonstrate. So here's... here's uh, you know, Paul going through his trial as to do something that the that children must do. So it's it's pretty interesting. You have uh, who else is here? Uh, lots of this stuff, but you don't really get to see anything. So yeah, I thought the trailer did a good job of not like giving away everything. Like if you know what you're t what you're looking at, you're gonna know what it is. But if you don't know, it's okay. If you don't know, now you know. Everybody's real happy, happy days, yay. He's riding, basically, I'm sure you could figure out he's riding a sandworm, um, which is something that the children of Fremen uh, can do. Uh, here you have Javier Bardem reprising a very important role. Uh, I thought he was really good in the first movie. I'd like to see more of him, so that's good, which is, he plays a pivotal role. I really thought this part was kind of interesting because it's black and white because it's the past. And um, oh, there's those those cool ornithopters. I thought they did a really good job with the ornithopters. They're basically like dragonflies, the way they they fly because they have to fly in the desert, so it's real difficult uh, for like conventional vehicles to fly. Here you have Fade fighting in our Harkonnen tournament, something that'll be important later. And they basically give away the end of the movie, but I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens here. There is a character that I thought was pretty fascinating that they included her because she she's definitely in the book and um, Lady Margot she, she's married to uh, Lord Fenring and it's real real weird like they're very strange characters that are don't have like a clearly defined role so having them in this is kind of interesting. I don't know exactly what role they're going to play considering the movie's been condensed. And you haven't seen half these characters. You haven't seen Lady Fenring. You haven't seen Fade. You haven't seen uh, the Emperor. You haven't seen Princess uh, Ulan. So you're going to get introduced to a whole horde of characters that you have no familiarity with. So I think that'll be a little tough for some people to understand and comprehend. This scene, I don't even understand what's going on in this scene. Um, yeah, I don't know what she's wearing. I don't even have a guess what in the world is going on here. Maybe I do, but I, I don't really know. Could have something to do with the Benny Gesserit, but I'm not sure. And, uh, you know, it, the, the, the one big secret on Arrakis, which I think they say on the f in the first movie that they need desert power and that there's the power of all these people hiding out in the, in the high desert. So it's it's pretty cool showing all that. This is the part, yeah, I'm not going to show any of this because you don't want to know it. But overall, I'm ready. I'm excited. Are you excited? Let me know in the comments below. I, I'm I'm going to see it in the theaters. I didn't see the first one in the theaters. I saw it on HBO Max or the Max or whatever. Made me wish I kind of did see it in the theaters because I just some of the visuals. The spaceships were super impressive. I love this high science fiction thing. Dune's often considered unfilmable. It's one of those movies that's super tricky. They've done an oak like you know, B plus job so far. And 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 the biggest reason why it's hard to embrace it is because 
you just got half of the story and not even half. So we'll see how far this goes. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm a little concerned that Timothy Chalamet might be a little too subdued, but I, yeah, I saw some acting in there. So let's, I'm, I'm good at going in open-minded. I'm, I'm excited. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Let's see how to, Dune 2 does. And uh, I will catch it in theaters, but I'll, I'll, Give the full review how I feel about it. Catch a bunch of my other videos that talk about Dune if you're interested in that. We also have a full-length audio podcast. It's uh, Friday nights. We live stream it here on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday nights. You can also catch it for free on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those places and more. Thank you so much uh, for reacting with me to Dune as I kind of click through it there. And uh, appreciate it. We'll uh, catch you in a little while because I am on to the next one.